Hi everybody, I'm back. I had to take some time off because I had COVID. <clears throat> I might have to take breaks for a little coughing, but that's still much better. I feel great. Have you heard of subungual melanoma? So this is a type of melanoma that occurs under the nail bed. It can be the fingernails, the toenails, and even um, in areas of the feet. But usually this is a nail bed issue. It is not considered associated with uh, sunlight or UV rays, uh, tanning beds, that sort of thing. But the answer to why some people get this um, isn't completely clear. So the main areas are big toes, fingers, thumbs, and, and like I said, areas around the nail bed, for example, you know, just a little area around here, you might see something. So what does subungual melanoma look like? I'm going to put up pictures, but I want to explain it to you. Although it rare, it is aggressive, it is a type of melanoma. The key to a good outcome is early detection, early treatment, just like most cancers. Subungual melanoma in the nail bed usually, usually, but not always, looks like a vertical discoloration, usually black, brown, or some people have even described it as a shade of purple, like a dark purple hue. And if you scrub it, it does not come off. And if you have your nail grow, it's not going to grow out so that you can cut your nails and you see that this dark spot is going away. It does not go away. In fact, the longer that you have it, it can uh, then get bigger and can be darker and can cover your whole nail bed and then can go also into other outer parts of the nail bed along the skin. Have you all heard about how Bob Marley died? He died from this type of fingernail melanoma. And from what I read, and I who knows the truth with all of it, so let, uh, unless you spoke to the person themselves. But the information that I read said that he had it on his big toe and that he thought it was an injury. Now, it um, can easily be mistaken for a bruise, an injury to an ill bed, or fungus. You won't know for sure unless you see a dermatologist. It, I mean, if you want to start with your general practitioner, your primary care manager, nurse uh, ARNP, PA, but it's always better to be safe than sorry, so start somewhere. So Bob Marley thought it was an injury to his toenail. And then as time went on and he did get it looked at, the plan for treatment for him and the best treatment was amputation. And from what I read, he did not want to go that route. So he'd rather have surgery and have it excised or taken out of his toenail. The problem is that it spread. And uh, melanoma in the nail bed can spread just the same way other cancers can spread, you know, to lungs, to lymph nodes, to bone, etc. I'm not a dermatologist and I'm not an expert at the anatomy and physiology of nail beds, but underneath the nail bed, there is access with capillaries, with blood vessels, uh, with lymphatic um, connections to come from the nail bed into our body. And that is how it is spread. It takes months apparently for this type of fingernail melanoma to spread. But once it has, it's harder to treat. And, and then the statistics for a good prognosis aren't as favorable. I'm going to list information below, but I also wanted to tell you about a lady named Kim that I found on uh, YouTube. And she tells her personal story of having this type of melanoma. And I'll insert a picture. I might even put it on my thumbnail. That's the, the first picture you see when you're scrolling through your YouTube. Uh, several years ago, she, uh, Kim, noticed a line that, like I mentioned, not horizontal, but a vertical line occurred on her thumb. Uh, I believe it was just her thumb. And she looked it up, smart lady and a lovely lady. If you listen to her, you just see what a uh, 
beautiful soul she is and she's trying to make people aware um, and spread information about if you're suspicious of this or somebody you know at work or someone you love anybody child or adult has something that looks suspicious like these photos i'm going to put up including the picture of kim's nail bed it's better to get it checked out by a dermatologist. But she had looked up the information about what this could look like. Hers was a dark purple color. And she, in her research, found the name of this and found that it's a type of fingernail melanoma. But when she went to her general practitioner, that person did not take her seriously, felt like that it's really rare. I'm sure that that is not fingernail melanoma let's watch it well if you ever are told something might be cancer but might not but let's just watch and wait it, it just doesn't make you feel easy about it. you can't sleep very well usually it can cause a lot of anxiety you want to have another opinion and more than likely you want to have this thing taken out that could be cancer or at least get a biopsy to find out so that's what she did she went back to her primary care provider she got a referral to a dermatologist the dermatologist did a biopsy and discovered that yes she had fingernail melanoma she then had to see a oncologist she had her finger amputated and she did get a prosthetic finger oh now that i'm thinking about it Thinking back to her video, I remember her putting her hand up and she it was actually an amputation of one of these digits, not the thumb, if I remember right. She had her surgery done and that apparently was enough that it took care of her melanoma. She did have lymph nodes taken out. Her lymph nodes were checked. They were clear. She had some big ups and downs with all of this and her story is very interesting. But thankfully, she got it taken care of in a timely manner. And I don't know about a current, like as of today, this month update, but it seems like she did very well. So let's talk about what signs and symptoms you're going to look for. And putting up pictures really does help because uh, this is going to show you directly what it looks like. Now, the other things that are listed here are if you have a split crack or deformity in some way to your nail bed, if you have a, and it doesn't clear, and you have an injury to your nail bed that never uh, recovers from the injury, if you have what looks like a bruise that does not improve, it's good to get it checked out because this looks like a bruise. This looks like it could be something you, you crushed your finger in something or you went over your finger or toes with something. Um, and we've all had injuries in our lifetime, um, but this is a little bit different. It's very specific. And, and um, the best thing to do is go in to see a dermatologist to make sure that everything is okay. So again, treatment or how to, not so much treatment, but how do we diagnose this? It would be seeing a dermatologist, getting a biopsy. If necessary, treatment would be amputation further on down the road, if necessary, and a lymph node biopsy, perhaps. But uh, then maybe immunotherapy and radiation. Those are just some therapies. The risk factors are unknown. And I just want to say a little something about melanoma. It made me think of my brother-in-law, uh, Jeffrey, who just recently passed away from stage four melanoma um, that started with a mole and his mole was not your typical dark black looking thing moles that are melanoma can also look like different things just like we're talking about the nail bed or one line or one streak and it can also look like a red um, coloration a slight purple discoloration or even a clear raised or even slightly flat mole but when my brother-in-law was diagnosed with melanoma, he, like Bob Marley, chose to not have any treatment other than to have the uh, mole excised. Or in Bob Marley's case, the uh, lesion under his nail bed was excised or surgically taken out. So my brother-in-law also chose to have just surgery and um, he treated the rest of it himself. But in his case, in Bob Marley's case, and I'm sure many, many others, as we see, that doesn't always take care of the melanoma from spreading, although so many people continue to self-treat. So, I hope what I list below is helpful. Um, 
my goal here on my channel is for education and to, to offer you insights on how to be your best advocate, uh, better to check things out than be so fearful that you don't go in and possibly save your life for some conditions. Many conditions require that we get prompt treatment rather than delayed treatment for the best outcome. Then please consider subscribing and please hit the like button. Why do we always say that? I even made a video about why. Why do we always have to say that? It's because so often people are scrolling and listening and not engaging. Um, and we just ask that even a like is good because we appreciate it so much because so often nobody else is going to see the content, tells the algorithm to pass it along to other people, and hopefully this will help somebody else.